Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina show. Folks, I have got somebody coming on from the Lancaster campground. They have some wonderful things happening and a lot of it is also, I think it's safe to say a lot of it, is open to the public. So I'm hoping that you can help them, support them. It's just a beautiful area out there. It's a little gym that we have in our community. And then also I have, we're going to talk about, it's a big buzz going around about pickleball. I don't know anything about it, but I'm about to learn and so are you. Don't go anywhere. It's down here with Tina. My name is Allie. Um, I just became 14 years sober at the end of last month. Through the support of my family and friends, I got the courage to ask for help. And through treatment services and the recovery community, I was able to start my recovery journey. Now I get to work as a peer supporter and an addiction treatment navigator where I get to help the next sick and suffering. If you don't have family and friends that can support you right now, you can find those supports through treatment providers, the recovery community, and peer supporters like me. Every life matters and your recovery is worth it. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I have Colin Tripp with me. He is with the Lancaster Campground. It is the time of the year that it starts getting busy over there because people are going to be getting out and about and different activities will be starting to take place because it's all about, that's part of what I think campground is, is getting outside and doing and hanging out and chilling out and things like that. Colin is the marketing director, so he is here to just chat with us about what they've got going on. How are you doing, Colin? I'm doing all right, Tina. How are you? I cannot complain. <laughs> I'm just very excited that the weather is breaking and people are getting outside. More I know. More. I know. Those flowers, uh, Gloyd's Family Lawn Care, they came in and did our flowers and our um, all that stuff out there. And it is really, like, they're all blooming right now. Mm -hmm. And I just took a really awesome picture of our hotel, so... It's on our Facebook page, but um, yeah, it's really looking awesome. Tulips are gorgeous, and mm -hmm. the landscaping that they've done and all of yes. that is just beautiful. It is, yeah, very, very nice out there. But you guys have a lot of different things that take place there. Before we get started with that, why do you work there? Why did you decide to want to be involved <laughs> in part of the Lancaster Campground? Well, it's actually a funny story. So um, I actually am... Uh, full-time student at Ohio University Lancaster and uh, I get my associates in the spring uh, this spring and um, I actually failed a finance um, class and so I was like oh crap I'm a hands-on learner so I was like you. I was like I need to find a place that is they like me and that I can just like look at their QuickBooks and be like hey you know debits and credits and I was like, oh, I've been working at the campground for six years. And so I was like, oh, they love me there. So I go over there and, of course, I convince them with a box of donuts. <laughs> donuts get you anywhere. Um, and so they agreed that, you know, hey, yeah, help, help Kim out. And then that was in December. February, she became ill oh. for a month. And there was no office manager. And so they were like, hey you you know you're hey, here you want to do this, do this? <laughs> and i was like Aww. um sure so i was paying bills and i was doing like i was doing all sorts of stuff with finance and i you know just failed <laughs> that class so it was like but it helped you lovely gain yes. experience yes it did and so i did such a good job place isn't burnt down <laughs> so <laughs> they were like hey we like you you should continue yeah. i was like all Aww. right cool so 
I've been there ever since. But that's very, very cool. Yeah, it's, it's really important cool. to be liked in yes. it, where you work. <laughs> oh <stuff>. yeah. <laughs> no. Aww. So the, now you're doing this, and now mm -hmm. you're here, and you're going to share with all of us about the wonderful things that they've got going on at the campground. Now, yeah. the things that you're about to share are they things that happen every year, or have they added some things, Colin? A little bit of both. Um, some of the things, for example, I won't get into too much detail, but like the pool. Mm -hmm. um, camp meeting and the summer program through all of my years at the campground they've always done that okay. so some of those things but then of course I'm marketing director and I have got you know ideas out the wazoo so That's put awesome. my creative spin on a couple of things so now with the pool the swimming pool it has been renovated and it is newer now it's been a couple years right that that's been done so yes. it's nicer it looks really nice yes yes they did a uh, Completely redid our pool in 2021, I believe, mm -hmm. and we're still seeing the crystal blue, mm -hmm. awesome uh, inside. Or, yes. Yeah, the, the inside of the pool itself. Yeah, yes. it's very, yes. very nice and clean, and it's a, it's good looking. It, it is. So, do you want to begin with the pool and the yeah. membership and things like that for the yeah. swimming pool? Yeah. Um, so the pool, uh, first time since the pandemic, the pool is open to the public. Um, Admission is $4, and you can get your memberships and your pool parties and stuff um, at the office. We have a super awesome, her name is Claudia. She is the absolute most amazing pool manager, besides myself, besides myself. Um, and she's going to be taking care of the pool. This you year. don't know this. I know Claudia. Do you really? And I love her. So, <laughs> yes, she is amazing. Her mom and I are really good oh, friends. So, okay, yeah, gotcha. that's funny you guys don't even know. <laughs> yes. So, but, when you said Claudia, I was like, yay, she's coming back. She's yes. the lifeguard and such. Yes, she will be. She's managing the pool and she's picked out a couple of. Um, she's got a whole team ready to go. And I'm really excited for what they're going to bring. I think they're going to bring like Shark Week back. And Aww. she's got like Teen Night coming up, which. That'd be cool. I think she's going to do one of those a month, I think. Um, have a couple ice cream socials here and there. Do you so. have to have a membership in order to be able to go to the pool? No. And to pay for the pool? Okay. Nope. You can go in as a, just one time yep. if you want to go in one yes. time. Yes. And it's open, like I said, open to yes. the public. Okay. So. Perfect. Yeah. Good. So that's the pool. Um, a lot of other different summer programming coming up, not just the pool. That's just a piece of it. This, Yo, that, that's, this is like that's the tip like, of the iceberg. Yeah. yeah like I mean, a little bit. We're just... Yeah. Getting, yeah. <laughs> We're just getting warmed up. <laughs> warmed up, the pool cools off, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. No, okay. Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> the cafe. What do you have going on with the cafe, Colin? Man, this year, it's a new year, it's a new chef, and it's back to the roots. And we tested her food. Her name is Cindy, and she is the sweetest, sweetest person. And her cooking is, like, top-tier stuff. And it's so simple. Like, it's... <laughs> Perfect. Simple to maybe. Perfect. Uh, seems simple, right? Yes. Uh, we would never be able to recreate it. No, no, no. Yeah. But um, what are some of the things we expect to see on the menu? Do you know yet? Does she have that out yet? And really? Um, she she does. It's comfort foods. Okay. It's all comfort foods, and it's like soup and salad for ten bucks. Okay. Nice. Kind of deal, and you know you get your dessert and you get your drink with it. It's just an all-in-one. Okay. Package deal and. The hours, will there be different set hours or? Um, we will have those on our Facebook page. Okay. All right. So she's also doing catering and her catering, I think this is hilarious, is Delicious by the Bite. I love that little name. And um, if, you, if you want to reserve it, you just call the office and we will. Okay. Uh, and she'll do catering yeah. for it. Yeah. Wonderful. So that's the cafe. That's new with the cafe. Uh, the summer program is from June 4th to August 27th. Okay. And it is our um, worshiping program puts together a Sunday service every Sunday. And we ask a bunch of pastors from around the surrounding area to come out and oh, nice. um, do a, to preach on the Sunday. Yeah, so, yeah, like a Sunday worship. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So that'll be throughout the summer. And then we have camp meeting. What's camp meeting? Camp meeting is, um, it consists of a, it consists of Heritage Sunday and it 
is from Sunday to Wednesday, and it's all about the campground. So Heritage Sunday, we kick off with a uh, with a service, a uh, yeah, your like service, service, and yeah. um, all of the historic buildings are open oh, for the nice. public to see inside. Do you have to pay for a ticket or anything like that, or reserve a spot? Just nope. come. Just come on in and. We have our worship program and our historical society comes, joins together, and they give the tours out and stuff. It's nice. really a great time. And you when, know, is, when is that, Colin? It is August 6th through August 9th. So we've got some time for yes. that yet. Okay, yeah. good. Maybe you guys will come back and we'll yeah go into more of that. Yeah. And then you have a 5K? We, yes, that is the ver our very first 5K. Okay. And that is the. It's going to be a color run. I've I actually just mapped it out yesterday and got sponsorships ready to, or sponsorship availability is ready to go. Okay. And you can start registering for the race in I think June. Yes, June. June. Okay. Yeah, so. June. And when's the race? The race is October fourteenth. Okay, 9 so it's a little later. It's yeah, a little, a little bit later. Yeah. So. Perfect. What's paint and sip? Paint and sip, yes. So I was thinking, I was like, you know, we don't really have a whole lot of, I mean, besides the um, summer program and the yeah. camp meeting, we don't really have a whole lot for like the family life, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm guilty. I'll, I'll, I'll say it. I have been like, oh, crap, Mother's Day is around the corner. I don't have anything for my mom. <laughs> and so I was like, what a great way Did to... You? like either interact with your mom or to bring her out. Um, and it's a paint and sip. We have a artist who's gonna come out and teach how to um, paint a picture. And the sip part would be alcoholic, but we but don't have not, alcohol at the campground. Right. So it's, it's gonna be allowed. teas yep. and yeah. coffee and Aww, light desserts yeah. and stuff. So it'll be a fun time. It'll and be a really great time. We'll have to register for that, yes, I would imagine. Yes. Yes. Registration is open okay. currently, and um, okay, yeah, fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Yes. Okay, per person. Per person. Per person. And that's okay. that is all in per, all inclusive. Okay, everything is included. Anything else that we haven't talked about yet that we were going to talk about? I think we got Mother's Day and Father's Day. Yes, but Father's Day. Yes. We're going to have a Father's Day cookout at our cafe. Okay, very very nice. So, so again, folks can follow the Facebook to stay up. Get your calendars out, write down everything that you want to mm -hmm. come out and support with the campground. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful ground out it there really is. for you guys and what you have. I mean, and you have the shelter house that folks can rent and things mm -hmm. like that. For the public, that's part of the public as well. Mm -hmm. So anything else? I think that's it. I think we have it all. What is the contact information? Yes, so for folks? Um, our phone number is 740-653-2119. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at The Lancaster Campground. We've got a bunch of groups that are coming out, um, or we have a bunch of Facebook groups that are being released slowly. Um, but then you can also visit our website at www.lancastercampground.org. Wonderful, great. And if you have any questions about wanting to purchase one of the cottages out there, call the campground as well, that yes. you guys can direct them into where if you want to become a permanent part of, or seasonal part of, the Lancaster Campground. Colin, thank you so much. Thank awesome. You. Folks, don't go anywhere. It's downhill with Tina, and I'll be right back. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I have Steve Landis with me. He is president and then I also have another Steve who is vice president of the newly just started a few months ago 
Lancaster Fairfield County Pickleball Association. Welcome, gentlemen, Thank to you. the show. I am excited, and I had shared with them, and they it, they chuckled because, and I did it kind of on purpose, but I know absolutely nothing about pickleball. But there is a huge buzz going on about pickleball because I've I'm starting to hear it in different places that I go, and I thought, nope, Tina, hold back, don't ask. I'm going to have these fellas on the show, and we're going to learn about it. So, who wants to begin? Steve VP, Steve P, I don't even know. Is that what we're going to do? Steve 1, Steve 2? What do you want to talk about? Pickleball. Landis. It's not just a new game. This is something that's been around for years now, is it not? That's right. It's been around since uh, 1965. Wow. Over um, 50 years. Yeah. A couple of guys um, uh, developed it, came up with an idea uh, because their family was uh, uh, vacationing on Bainbridge Island off of Seattle. And the kids apparently were grousing that summer, we have nothing to do, whatever. And so they had an old abandoned uh, uh, badminton uh, court, mm -hmm. found some uh, uh, rackets, a wiffle ball, they put the net up and off they go. And that was the birth of pickleball. Wow. Um, so it's been around a long time. Can you share with us, Steve, what is the difference between what pickleball is and what tennis? Because I've heard I heard you a little earlier mention sure. about it. So absolutely, if people um, have heard that. My background is in tennis, uh, so you know, for fifty plus years, I was uh, playing a game, and it's uh, very similar to tennis. It's, the court is approximately half the size, oh. and you have a you know you have a a paddle instead of a, a tennis racket, and the object is to to get the ball back and forth over the net and score okay. points. And the court is uh, much easier to cover as you get older. Like me, I've had three knee surgeries and one hip oh, replacement wow. surgery. So it's a lot easier for me to cover that court and continue to play and get good workouts and have fun as well, um, being a tennis player background. Yeah, so, and we've got one of the paddles here. It's not quite the size of the a tennis racket. They're either. larger than a ping pong paddle when, yeah. when Steve was talking about the, uh, the the birth of the game they actually used ping pong paddles and a, a wiffle ball baseball and and the bad bet net and so they put those parts together and made pickleball a game oh very nice now why did you start to play Steve well I, I sort of semi-retired back in 2013 and uh, it, it didn't re it didn't go well with me because mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've worked and I, en I enjoy working and I was trying to find things to do, and I had heard about pickleball. I knew nothing about it, and I got on the internet, started searching, and I, I found that they were playing it here in Lancaster. Okay. I thought, well, let's go see what happens. Um, and uh, I'm not addicted to it, okay. um, full blown. I'm just semi addicted. <laughs> semi addicted. Yeah. <laughs> semi addicted is better than full blown. No, yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> um, so that's that's how I got started, and that was about six years ago. Oh, okay. Um, so Steve's got his 50 plus years of experience. I'm six years playing. Okay. Um, and we like to joke that, as everybody will see, he's dressed as an athlete. I'm a nerd. You're a nerd. So this is something that is for anybody. <laughs> anybody can play this. Absolutely. I totally well, agree with that. Yeah. You don't have to be somebody that's been an athlete your entire life. You can pick up doing something like this. That yep, yep. What is it about it that you like so much about it and enjoy about it? Well, first of all, it, it's, it's, I hate to say it's, it's good for you. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've lost 25 pounds. Wow. Um, and just, just taking care of yourself. And, but you get out of it what you put into it. So mm -hmm. it's good for you. It's great exercise. It's good for the cardiovascular. It's great for you mentally. Okay. Um, a lot of nice people. Now, there's there's a few uh, that you run across um, that, uh, yeah. I haven't yet. <laughs> you haven't yet. <laughs> Maybe they're just reacting to me. Um, well, it's like anything, but for, for the most part, it's a, it's a nice community of people. Okay. Um, so there's, there's the social aspect of it. There's the health aspect. Yeah. Steve, what about the court itself? Is it, you said it's not a very big court. Uh, where do you go? Do you, I mean, you have to have a court, so where do you go to play? Absolutely. Most tennis courts are now um, lined for pickleball as well. Oh, in, okay. In the public parks and things okay. like that. We don't have any dedicated courts in the Lancaster area. There are some scheduled to be built in the near future. Okay. Um, many of the local communities around Lancaster have courts if you want to play on a dedicated court. Um, 
which means you have less lines to look at. It's less confusing. But um, as far as the quart size, it's 44 feet long and 20 feet wide. Okay. So, you know, you divide that in two, and that, that's your half to cover. And then it's the same as it would be in tennis. You have two on each side of exactly. the net. Exactly. Most, okay. of, most of the pickleball that is played um, in this area, in, in our group, is doubles. They do have singles, but not oh. a lot of people that I know play singles. Okay. It's more demanding. Because I know, okay, I'm, I call myself semi-active when it comes to and doing, like, exercise and things like that. And I'll go out there, and a friend of mine who play, maybe plays tennis once a week but didn't run as me, I'm still, that cardio of just the tennis alone, this maybe is something that's just not going to be as demanding on the body. Well, is what you're saying as far as the running. I think on your joints mainly. I think as far as cardio, it, it is as good because I it play. It is as good. Okay. You know, as far as what Steve made a good point, as far as um, losing weight by yes. playing a lot or, and or maintaining a weight level. So that's really where I was kind of leading into that as well. You don't <clears> just want to go out there and just if you haven't been doing anything whatsoever, you could overexert yourself easily. Right. <laughs> Steve, like I heard a noise. I've, I've, yeah. in, in six you years, can. I've, I've, I've yeah. had only three injuries. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, you want to you want to go into Gradually. it slowly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Make sure your doctor says you can do this. Okay. I if mean, you're a certain, I mean age, of course, and if you've had any kind of health issues, yeah. definitely. Exactly. Yeah. Make sure. Is it for a certain age, mentioning age? Or Not is it really. I think, I think it's all ages. Um, uh, children are starting to get lessons now. Um, oh, nice. Uh, you know, it was known as a senior citizen or older people um, uh, sport in the beginning. Uh, when I, I was playing tennis at the RecPlex, the YMCA RecPlex on Locust, and they had a sign up on the counter that said, Pickleball Fridays 11 to 1. And I would tell myself, I have to try that, I have to try that. And one Friday I did go in there and I was immediately uh, welcomed and I didn't have a paddle, they gave me a paddle to play with. And next thing you know, I was really hooked on it. And like Steve said, he's semi-addicted, I'm fully addicted. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll play 16 hours over three days. Oh, wow, That's wow, good. that is, yeah. yeah. When did it begin to become so popular? Because it's really, like I said earlier in the segment, a, it's a buzz going on about yeah, pickleball. It really started to boom around 2020, COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was, a, there was a nice steady growth, maybe 7% per year up until that point. And when COVID hit, people decided, I want something to do outdoors, not close to people. Mm -hmm. And I think the growth rate, is, it's nearly doubled in the last three years. So we're talking close to 30 plus percent per year. There's estimates of as many as 35 to 45 million Americans have played pickleball at least once now. Yeah. Wow, very it's, it's, nice. It's approaching pandemic stage. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. So you have this organization, the Lancaster Fairfield Pickleball Association. So that means that you probably are seeking members. We are seeking members. We currently How have about 60. 60. Yeah. Okay. Where would you like to be as far as numbers go? Is there a limit or not really? Yeah, we haven't talked about that, have we? Because do you have to have this organized for when people go out cause, and such if you're going to, you know. It's true. It's yeah. true. Um, we hope to have that problem that we have That's, so many people that problem. it's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, uh, one of our main objectives to be able to keep everybody engaged and be yeah. able to give them places to play and uh, the right groups to play with and things like that, the right activities. Uh, we want to have special um, charity tournaments and hmm. things like that, matches to raise money for the community, reach you know certain parts of the community that are underprivileged or special circumstances. Yeah, All right. yeah. Our, the big the big limiting factor we have right now is court space. Right. There's not enough courts for the number of people that are playing. Okay. Um, so do you have to split it up if you do this for different days and times and such? Yeah, right we can now? do that. And, and we have right now. I mean, we play Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the in the, in the winter. We play at the Recplex Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at eleven o'clock. <laughs> it's summer, so starting May one, we're going to be going outdoors. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask you if it was a, a yeah. seasonal or if it was year round. As long as you have so some place indoors, you can you play in the inside. winter. But uh, again, we're we're limited how many courts we have, so we have four dedicated courts at the old Mayor Park. Uh, there's going to be probably five in the near future at Rising Park. Very um, nice. Yep. And then 
at some point this year we'll have the new eight course at Olivedale. Um, but we need to, uh, we need space. So here's the, a big question. Do you all choose your partner? Or how do you have that? Because I can only imagine that some people may say, no, I only want to play with so-and-so each and every time to make it teams. And is it super competitive in that Go ahead, regard? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, Tina, we actually uh, do both of those things. We, okay, there are some people who prefer to play it's primarily. It's kind of like cornhole and, with, you know, all that other with, stuff. Exactly. Horseshoes and all that other. I want so-and-so. With one so. other partner. Or do you do a draw, and you and know, During open play, you. like at the Recplex, uh -huh. um, they have a coordinator there from that's a, a, a staff member that will have has a big board with the with the pool of players on there and will will tell which players are going to be next up on the court whether it's two players or four players and you never know who you're going to be paired up with. Okay. See, I like that because it really forces you to sometimes be with people like Steve said that he may not. But it's sort of but like you could really work together. You've heard the expression hurting cats. <laughs> Yeah, that's about what it is. <laughs> what is the contact information, uh, fellas, for anybody who is interested in learning um, more or want to become absolutely. a member? Absolutely. Email is lfpapickleball at gmail.com. Facebook? Facebook, <laughs> Facebook is Lancaster hyphen Fairfield. You need to search for Lancaster Fairfield Pickleball Association. Um, and we have a website. And we have a website. It's, it's yeah. in progress, being constructed, but... And that is uh, lfpba. Um, dot, dot org. org. Yeah. Dot org. Dot org, so, yeah. Perfect. Well, good luck with all of that, gentlemen. And ladies, or guys, it doesn't matter. And it is not age, yes, discriminatory or against nope. age either. So you can be, well, yours is, you probably want older, not, you know, like no. 18 and older. I mean, no, we'll you, take 18 you want up. 18 up. Although yeah, we have had 14-year-olds like playing. 14, with. yeah, yeah. And Kids the, that are capable to in be the tournaments, In the yeah, tournaments okay. that are held periodically uh, throughout the year, they're open play, so I I played gentlemen half my age, so yeah. it's it's pretty That's much awesome. yeah. That's great. I mean, there's no kind of gap there, no generational gap or anything. Exactly, nope. folks. Thank folks, gentlemen. Thank you so much, folks. You're my folks. <laughs> thank you so much. Don't go anywhere though. I'll be right back. It's down with Tina. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Down Him with Tina is brought to you by these wonderful sponsors. I'd like to thank the Lancaster Campground, Fairfield Area Humane Society, Ava Jewelers, Cryo Communications, as well as the Fairfield Town Crier, your good news newspaper. And don't forget folks, it is yard sale time. So you wanna look for the yard sales, you can look there. You wanna put something in for your yard sale. You can do that as well. Folks, I just thank you so much for continuing to support the Down Home with Tina show by sharing it on social media. You can watch it on social media, my Facebook page. You can watch it on YouTube, CLN, your hometown connection. Also, if you have Spectrum, you can watch it on 1021, that the CLN network as well. And keep sharing it share it with folks. We have some amazing folks that we have in our community that I highlight and I get to have right here. And if you have one, email me. Maybe I'll get to have them on and highlight them for you. It's Down Him with Tina. I hope you have a wonderful and a blessed week. God bless and good day.